All right, we are in the depths of Cornwall today on the north coast and we're going to do a bit of lure fishing. We're at an awesome spot here. We've got a fairly small tide today and we're fishing the ebb. We've got all this wicked rocky feature behind us here and it just creates a load of upwelling when the tide rushes over it and it's perfect for lure fishing. Ideally we'll get on some pollock today but um, you never know there's always a chance of some bass or maybe mackerel possibly wrasse. Okay so I'm just going to talk briefly about the sort of gear that I'm using at a mark like this. We've got hell of a lot of tidal flow here. It's almost scary. Well it is scary really and that's why I've got one of these on an automatic life jacket i'm fishing by myself today so it really is a good idea to wear one of these because if i fall in there i'm, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time um, even being a strong swimmer that's a lot of tide and uh, it's just it's just good practice to wear one of these when you're fishing by yourself because you never know you might hit your head and and this will save your life if that happens um, the rod that i'm using today this is a tailwalk Egin. picked it up from the art of fishing few weeks ago it's a lovely bit of kit nine foot six and uh yeah really nice rod pretty sensitive really good for casting and um you know you can just work all sorts on it uh, can whack out a 30 gram metal quite comfortably but mainly these sort of 20 to 25 gram soft plastics is what i'm going to be focusing on today and this is paired up with a 3000 pen battle dx really nice reel good bit of drag and that's got 20 pound braid on a little bit on the light side this is fairly deep and a lot of current i mean i'm probably going to be cast into five to ten meters of water here and it's going to be very snaggy so a little bit light but it will give me a bit of extra casting distance and it will allow that lure to sink faster in this tide using using a slightly thinner diameter braid and we're going to vary the lures but yeah mainly fishing these soft plastics this being the fish crazy paddle tail 150 mil with a 20 gram head and the gold color and it's a bit bashed up this lure already but that's fine it will still work well and it's almost better to use your rougher lures in a spot like this because snags are inevitable i'm going to waste no time i'm going to be casting in and around all these features hopefully finding some fish so i've got quite a lot to play with on this mark i've got some rocks over in that direction you can see where that white water's breaking and then all behind there, there's all this disturbed deeper water here. This looks really nice right in front of me here. And I can cast along the edge of this rocky line out there and bring it all in from here where it's fairly deep. Or I can go into the wind a bit and go out there where it's quite, it's quite choppy. There's quite a bit of swell there, but it looks quite deep out there. I think that's quite nice. But what I really want to be doing is aiming for these rocks right out in front of me around here, I think. Getting it as far out as I can and almost freelining it back with the tide because the tide's running out the channel right now all the way down across here and you can see it's quite rough over there but it's a little bit calmer up here and I think I want to aim for the edge of that rock there almost to the calmer water and play it back into the rough deeper water here really really nice mark this and it's actually my first time on here but I like the look of it a lot and with the wind almost behind me I can get a really good throw with that soft plastic there and I'm just gonna let a bit of line out I know it's quite deep here so I can let a bit of line out and just let that lure get nice and close to the bottom I'm sure if you fish this lure mid-water you'd still get takes but um, I like to fish it low and slow to start off with if I you know just to get those first few fish under the belt low and slow so I'm still letting it sink there's, there's wind blowing this way which is putting a bit of a bow in the line but you will see the line sort of catching up with the lure almost as it goes down and all the time that lure that, that little paddle tail is going to be going so it's working no matter no matter what almost that lure is working and i'm just going to start that retrieve nice and slow that's as fast as i need to go there unless i feel the bottom unless i feel a bit of kelp or a bit of rock i'll speed up a little bit that's as fast as i'm going to go because that lure is going to be moving quite a bit even even with that speed that lure is really going to be working i just want to keep it in the strike zone if you like in that deep water as long as i can i don't want to be whizzing it through all right guys here we go first fish of the day as the rain's just starting <laughs> there we go it didn't take too long 
It smells like a half decent fish as well. And the rain is really started here. I should be putting on my rain jacket right now. I'm gonna try and bring this one into my feet here, but we've got a huge swell crashing. And I, what I don't want this fish to do is to dive into the rocks beneath me. The thing about the rain is it can really... Oh, that's a decent bass, guys. That's a decent bass. <laughs> Just trying to think of the best way to land this fish probably going to be to go in front of me there. This is a nice bass guys. -hoo -hoo -hoo. The rocks are going to get hella slippy now with this rain. There's that fish. He's trying to pull in there. Uh. I've only got 15 pound fluorocarbon on. It's not very strong. With the next bit of wave, I might be able to get this fish up here. Oh, he popped off. Well, that was a good bass. It was inevitable to happen. He would have been released anyway. It was probably like a four pound fish right there. Whew. Just needed to be a little bit quicker there. He would have got wet then. Would have been a good wave to land on. Just needed to be a little bit quicker there. Uh, okay. Well, that's number one fish on the 30 gram head in blue. So if there's one bass, there should be some more. That was a wicked fight. I'm gonna put my rain jacket on. All right, I got my rain jacket on now. Still pouring it down. The rocks are getting all wet, which it makes my life a little bit more difficult. I mean, I got these, these fairly decent grippy shoes on, but rocks just get so slippy with a bit of fresh water on them so this is what i just hooked that lovely bass on it's a pearl blue crazy paddle tail from fish with a 30 gram head it's about a 40 gram lure all in so really at the, at the max of what i'm going to push this rod to but oh, i can really really wallop that out there and it's going to sink a lot quicker even just 10 grams more than that last crazy pedal tile I was using with the 20 gram head. That 10 grams is gonna make a huge difference in how quickly that lure will sink. So I'm a little bit more in contact with this. It's not, I'm, I was almost free lining that 20 gram. Whereas this one I'm working a bit more. I'm actually feeling, trying to feel the lure a bit more, you know, trying to keep in contact with it. Even though there's the, the wind pushing a bow in the line, I can feel the lure on the retrieve, which is what I like. Oh, there's another fish. I had another take then, guys. Just pause that lure a minute. I really like to feel the lure working. Well, as this mark is completely new to me, I've never been here before. I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes break from the fishing to have a little look around because I've done what everyone does. I've raced down to the spot which has the easiest access and looks the fishiest because you know you're just desperate to get a hook in the water aren't you when you first turn up and um i've been fishing away there for a bit and obviously had that that bass and then i thought hang on a minute it looks really bassy just over there because we've got these rocks here within casting range and all of the tide is rushing through them and if I was on a sib right now, that's where I'd be. I'd be behind those rocks, just in the lee of the, of the rock, really, out, out of the tide, casting into the tide, into the sort of bottleneck, and bringing it through there. That's what I'd be doing if I was on a sib. Um, so I thought I'd go and have a little look at this rock here. This rock looks pretty likely. Um, at some point today, I think I'll be able to get down there. Obviously not yet. A little bit too too high at the moment the water but as it drops away i think near low water i might just be able to get onto that rock there and fish the current there obviously the current's going to be less by then because the tide will be near near slack but there'll still be some current and uh that's, that's perfect that's all i need so yeah just taking five minutes to have a little look around i'm gonna have to probably scoot around down there somewhere to get onto that bit of rock. So 
Yeah, another hour or so off yet, I would have thought, but that does look really bassy, yeah? But I've been concentrating on the deeper water out here, uh, more for the pollock. That's, I would like to get a decent pollock today, um, but obviously I'm really into my bass, so any bass are welcome, but it would be nice just to get into a decent pollock, just to take it off the list. I've missed catching them. Here you go, fish on. Fish on, guys. That's yeah, an all right fish, actually. <laughs> right in the flow there. Bill's bassy with the head shakes. I'm gonna try and guide him into this little bit of rock just in front of me here. I might be able to hand line him up. Yeah, he's not too big. And do that all on the rod, actually. Into the pool there. <laughs> How was that for accuracy? Felt bassy because it was bass. There we go. Not a huge fish at all, but you know, a bit of fun. Even this size on the light rod. Yeah. It's trying to spike me, of course. There we go. That's an all right little fish, isn't it? Just about a schoolie, but yeah. Good fun on the, uh, on the spinning gear, nailed. Crazy paddle tail there, of course. I'll uh, unhook this guy and just send him back because, you know, these fish are the, are the future. Get them back as quickly as possible. All right, guys, here we go. We're into a decent fish here. Decent fish, I've been waiting for this all day. And I can't afford to mess this up. I just don't know how I'm going to land it, to be quite honest with you. There's a bit too sketchy. That's possible, but it's very hard. It's the problem when you're fishing like this, is you don't really think through to the point where you've actually got something on. Ugh. I'm making my way down these rocks here. Might get wet, but I think this is the best chance I'm going to get. It feels like a decent bass. I'm not letting it run too much. Slacking off on the drag of it as we get a bit closer in. Whoa. Just rain, so the rocks are quite slippy. Can't see the fish yet. But it's getting close. Yeah, it looks like a decent bass from here. Right. What my plan is is to try and get it up on this ledge here and then I might be able to kneel down and hand line it up. It's actually fought pretty well this fish. I just can't afford to mess up and slip now. It's just going around the corner there. I can just, uh, this is very hairy. Lose the fish at any moment here. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to try this approach instead because I can't get him around the corner. Might be able to step out on the edge of this rock. <laughs> Doing a full circle here. But I might be able to step out on the edge of this rock and, and hand line him up. It's a very decent bass. I'm almost tempted to go down there. Whew. But it's steep. Alright, it's getting down on me on me ass here guys and I just get to the edge of this rock and try and hand line him up. It's a very good bass and it's only just hooked. I can see the hook hold and it doesn't give me loads of confidence but well we can see the fish anyway so I guess I gotta touch the leader for it to count but <laughs> 
going to be quite difficult here. Yeah. Line's just pinged there, guys, but he caught on the rock. It's a shame. It's a lovely bass, that, but I think in hindsight, if I could have got down here, it would have been a bit better, but it's a long way around. I'm going to try and get another one. Yeah, we hooked up a little one here, guys. Maybe a little bass, or a little pollock. Oh, it's actually an all right pollock there. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Much bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> Well, this is not the best of positions to be in because I'm just dangling them off the rock right now. Ah, it's actually an alright pollock. If I can get them up on this rock with a wave, then that would be alright, but ah, I missed them then. I just need slightly stronger line, really. I mean, I'm on 15 pound fluoro here, and I think, I think 25 would be the ticket, really. I could try and hand line him up, but I'm more worried about losing the lure really than anything. All right, kind of got him just just on the rod there. Okay, in the rock pool. There we go. What we like <laughs> in the rock pool. All right, I've got to clamber down the rocks here to get to this fish, and these rocks. Oh, wet still. We got to time this. Shouldn't be too bad. This is why you need to wear a life jacket, guys. Oh, there's a fish. He's unhooked. Keep an eye on the waves. All right, quick retreat. <laughs> there we go. Just a little guy. But nice to catch. I came here today wanting to get a pollock or two and that's what I've achieved so yeah nice to get on these bronze beauties slip her back happy days maybe we can get another one all right so I think the tide has dropped enough now and the swells calmed enough for me to get onto this rock here and fish in and around these ones sticking up at the water here I think that's about as bassy as you can possibly get with all the tide that's going to be rushing through there. So, I'm trying to take my time here and figure out my route back. I mean, I've still got another hour of the outgoing. I'm not too worried because I probably will just fish this until slack. And then once we get to slack, I'll make my retreat. Uh, I'm not going to be getting down here I'll get my feet wet. This is why it's nice to go light. Just bring one rod, one little dry sack. Because it means you can scramble quite easily along rocks like this. With a lot of gear, it would be quite difficult. So what I'll do is I'll leave my my main bag here because I don't need all that weight with me. He'll be fine there. I don't think, you know what, just for extra caution, we'll leave him behind the rock there. In case some big freak wave comes along, save me a lost lure box. And then this should be a fairly straightforward scramble. So if I go out there, I'll probably get wet, but it's going to be the easiest route and I'm hoping I can just hop across here somewhere that'll be really nice and easy yep just a nice little hop and then a quick run up the rock here <laughs> and look at this guys it looks so good I just gotta be careful because the waves are crashing on there still the rocks are dry here so with the tide going out even more I should be good and then I might be able to fish down there later I'm going to start off in the colour that's already caught for me. Pearl blue. This one's real beat up. I've already been glued back together a few times for myself. But the hook's sharp. And it will still have that action which these lures are so well known for. I'm going to pump it out there. And I might work a bit closer to the rocks at times, but I'll see what happens with the lure there. 
Let it sink a little bit. It's probably quite shallow here. And I'm just going to work a nice moderate retrieve. And I'm always scanning the waves that are coming in to put an eye on what's going to come at me because it's not unusual for it to be big, big waves, you know, the odd big wave that would catch you off guard. And I am quite close to the water here. I've got my life jacket on and I can scramble to some drier ground there if I need to. Guys, I just lost a really nice fish then. Just messing around with the camera there, trying to get it going and uh, well, I don't think I had hooked it quite properly because it was pulling around for a bit and then it just popped off. But it did feel like a good fish. Uh, it's always a, a downer when you lose something decent. I mean, if it's a small fish, you don't really mind so much, but that felt even better than earlier's bass, so I'm a little bit missed by that. Look at this, it just looks so good right in front of me here. God. Honestly, this has got to be one of the fishiest spots I've ever fished from the shore. I don't know if it's just today's conditions or what. I mean, we're on neat tides, but... So sometimes you'll get your hooks bluntening from when they've been snagged up on rocks or when you're bringing them in and they're knocking against rocks. I got this Leverman here with a little fine diamond file here and just rub it across it a few times and you'll be amazed how quickly it brings the point back and I found with these fish hooks I think they're crog these hooks but these, these fish hooks sharpen up really well and they're pretty strong hooks they won't really bend out but they can dull a bit over time and they retake an edge really nicely this is just a bit of field work really but that there is already so much sharper than what it just was it will just save you from missing your bite yeah that's nice and sharp i mean it's not as sharp as it was when it came from the factory but it's a lot better than what it was and i'm more confident now that i will be able to connect nicely with the fish all right we're into a nice fish here this time a bit closer to the water which is good news for me should make landing this if i can get it to my feet a bit easier this feels like a really heavy fish and what i can't let it do is do what it's just done guys ah, he's gone into the weeds that is very annoying it's so shallow here guys i just gotta hope that he runs out of it i don't know what it is i thought it was a bass bass can be really stubborn if they go in a hole you know I've had a tough day of it today with these fish. I either get them to my feet and I ain't got the power to lift them out or I've not got the power to keep them from running into the ground here. It's so shallow. My fingers crossed I'll get them back, but it felt like a really nice fish. I'm just gonna slacken off on him for a bit and see what he wants to do. Well, I lost the fish there, but I got the lure back. Uh, I guess in some ways it's a silver lining. That was hell of a fish, guys. By far the biggest today. But a shame to lose it. Yes, big on, big on. Oh, I'm going to have to tighten up on this fish, guys. Oh, big. <laughs> what a run. What a run at first. I'm not giving this fish an inch unless I absolutely have to here. I've just lost too many today. I'm not doing it again. This feels like a decent fish as well. It's just going to be risky playing it in close here. He's actually running towards me at the moment. Yeah, it's a nice bass. It's a lovely bass. Let's see if I can guide him up here. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <clears throat> guide him up he's not particularly well on the hook there but uh. there we go 
Got it that time. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh, took me long enough to land a better fish there. This one really did run. I thought it was a bit bigger in all honesty. And it's just around a 45, maybe 50 centimetre fish there. Let's see if I can get them up. Yeah. There we go. Oh, what a beauty. What a perfect condition fish that is. He's got a little lice there on his head. But thin perfect and beautiful colours. Bit of green on the flank there. This fish has been living in this sort of coastal environment for a while. Obviously feeding up on sand eels at this time of year and I mean it's inevitable really that one of these is gonna <laughs> he doesn't even want to let go now. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to let go of that. Inevitable that they're gonna be feeding on those. So yeah, happy days, that's a lovely bass. Very happy with that. Yeah, we got another fish on here. This one, oh yeah, that's a good fish. Yeah, yeah, another good fish. Oh, that one might be bigger. He's in the rocks again. God damn it. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Ah, he's right on the edge, come out, come out. There we go, I think I got him out there. <laughs> this is a decent one. This might be better than the last one I just had. Bullying them a bit more here, just because I'm fed up of losing them. What's that? That's a pollock. <laughs> I thought it was fighting a bit different. A nice pollock, that. Beautiful colours. The eyes wash right up the top there now. You go down and unhook him. That's a wicked looking pollock right there. He's been living in the kelp his whole life, I expect. Not much of a rock pool, but it's better than nothing. Try and lay them in something wet, because you know it stops them from scratching themselves up so much. Uh, just a lip hook there, but beautiful pollock. That's exactly what I was after, one like that. He fought really well for the kelp and that is such a beautiful fish right there bronze colors on it nailed crazy paddle tail in the smaller size there Let's just pop it out this guy is gonna go back straight away as nice as pollock are to eat this one gets to go back Beautiful fish down here in Cornwall. This is what it's all about. Well, I've had a lovely session here today down in Cornwall on the shore. Been a lot of fun. Got amongst some decent fish and well, if there's anything I'm taking away from this session is that I need to up my braking strain of both my mainline and my leader on a mark like this because I'm using 20 pound braid with 15 pound fluoro and those bigger fish, I just couldn't, I couldn't get them up out of the water and I was struggling to keep some of the moderate fish just out, out of the rocks. Um, so yeah, that's something to take away. I mean, 20 pound braid is not, you know, by no means light, um, but I think I just need to go a little bit heavier, maybe 25 or 30 and with really 25 pound fluoro uh, leader got the power to really yank stuff out then it's not going to abrade as easily and i can more importantly hand line the fish up when it's at my feet but um yeah those crazy paddle tails are working amazing today as always picked up pretty much every single fish um can't go wrong with them and yeah i really must say this is a nice mark um quite a challenging one to fish uh just because of the amount of snags and uh, rocks and yeah, you, I think this one that you could spend a bit of time working out and very rewarding. I mean, I've done pretty well. I'm, I consider that a good session. Thank you very much for watching this video and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and if you want to see more then subscribe. And I'm posting a lot on my Instagram account these days, Open on the Water, the same as the YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, go and check that out if you want to see a bit more regular content. 
uh, yeah until the next one thank you very much cheers and gone <laughs>